wanted Coach Walls and me to be the next Vice President and President of the United States of America. What was your favorite speech? Okay, so I'll, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Uh, I'm going to say of kind of the younger folks, because I love, and they're not even younger, but like, let's just say the newer folks who they were showing off, you know, I think uh, Jasmine Crockett gave, you know, a fantastic speech. Yeah. Will a vindictive, vile villain violate voters' vision? <laughs> For a better America or not, I hear alliterations are back in style. Jamie Raskin, I'd say a close second. Um, and again, it's funny when you say, I don't think he's young. I think he's like 60 or something. I don't know. But but he hasn't been around as long. And again, I really do think there's a huge divide between the boomer generation. This is not an attack. It's just everything changes and why I wanted this to happen in Congress. And it has with Hakeem Jeffries. I wanted it on, on a presidential level to a certain degree because I know this. I can say this as somebody who's in the middle of Generation X, a 52-year-old. You know, I was young enough when Reagan was in office that it didn't have an impact on me in the way of like, oh, my God, he's so popular. He's so charismatic. Conservative policies are so popular. There's so much backlash against liberalism. You know, I came up in the 90s with Clinton seeing us win and seeing our, our policies begin to be popular again. Yes, we were more of the center, but we were moving sort of to the left. And, uh, and the, you know, but I, I, and I think the boomers could just a lot of them can never get that out of their head. And I think it has hampered them, you know, why they have they've taken so much crap from lying cheating, traitorous Republicans is because that's just the way it was, right? The Republicans ruled the roost in the 80s and even for much of the 90s, even as, as Clinton was, was clawing it back and then they got Bush in office, you know, and they started their streak of, hey, we don't even have to win the popular vote anymore. We'll still elect our guys, you know? And, and I, I, just the fact that at this point, everything you and I believe in for the most part is shared by more than 70% of the American population. We have a chance to elect someone who has spent her entire life trying to give people the same chances America gave her. The next president of the United States of America, Kamala Harris. They are completely relying on a ridiculous and just as extreme as possible minoritarian, you know, like, like hey, we get two senators from states that have four cows and, you know, two sheep. Uh, we, we have like eight states like that and, and the Electoral College and gerrymandering and in every way possible, they've rigged the whole thing. So they really represent somewhere around 35 to 40 percent at best of the population. And in the end, they, they, they're they treated like a majority. And too many Democrats who are older didn't break away from that. And the cool thing is you've seen Biden getting tougher. I think, you know, the younger ones like Jasmine Crockett and Jamie Raskin and and, and Bashir was up on stage, another one like him who's, who's great, gave the courage to these other folks. To have Bashir from Kentucky talking about abortion as an issue of freedom, not being scared on the issue, not hiding. But when Kentucky had its, its, you know, when it had its referendum, it may have been closer than it was here in Ohio, but they still, we, the good guys still won. You know, I, I mean, it just a reminder, we are on the right side of all of these things. Only Kamala Harris truly understands the unseen labor and unwavering commitment that has always made America great. For years, Donald Trump did everything in his power to try to make people fear us. I want to know, who's going to tell him, who's going to tell him that the job he's currently seeking might just be one of those black jobs? Even in the most conservative states, even if you go to Idaho or Kentucky, on abortion rights, on, on, you know, universal background checks, on climate, on these things, like, like on, on, you know, marriage equality, virtually every one of these issues, we are still in a majority. And then, and these are in the most red states. They just, they cheat, they lie, they, they smear their opponents. The mainstream media sucks and won't do its job. And, you know, they get away with it. That's what happens. Wherever she's needed, however she's needed, Kamala rises to the occasion. And she did it for me and our family. And now that the country needs her, she's showing you what we already know. She's ready to lead. And with your help, she will lead with joy and toughness, with that laugh and that look, with compassion and conviction. 
She'll lead from the belief that wherever we come from, whatever we look like, we're strongest when we fight for what we believe in, not just against what we